brands in the metaverse, post-pandemic beauty, and the battle of bricks and mortar versus e-commerce. That and more on today's episode. Want to know what's next? For over two decades, we've led the world's most influential brands to create the right products at the right time for tomorrow's consumer. This is WGSN's Client Questions Answered. Hello and welcome to the show where our experts from around the globe unpack your biggest challenges. I'm Carla Bazashi, President and CEO at WGSN. Let's dive straight in. Our first question today is, there is so much buzz around the metaverse, it's a little overwhelming. How do we begin to engage? Such a great question and one we are getting from lots of our clients at the moment. So let's head over to New York to hear from our expert on this topic, Cassandra Napoli. Here's what she had to say. The metaverse is gearing up to be the ultimate buzzword in 2022. We're gonna start to see more brands make strides to enter the metaverse by building digital playgrounds, embracing gaming platforms, and buying up virtual real estate, which will unlock meta-commerce. The avatar economy will explode and digital fashion will become a bit more mainstream. As avatars will need something to wear, this will unlock the direct-to-avatar retail opportunity. And similar to the rise of brands launching dedicated social media and influencer marketing teams over the last decade, we will all also start to see the rise of brands building Metaforce teams or the Metaverse workforce. In 2022, brands should begin investing heavily in teams dedicated to building and powering virtual worlds and the branded experiences within them. At WGSN, we feel quite strongly that brands cannot afford to wait. They need to be planning for Metaverse now. So if you'd like to learn more about where to start, do get in touch with our team. Now, our next question comes from a beauty brand who are asking, the pandemic has changed beauty rituals. Which ones are now here to stay? This time, we're going to Claire Varga, our head of beauty, to hear her thoughts on the matter. Beauty snacking, homeworking and hybrid living has liberated beauty and self-care from the traditional AM and PM routines that have bookended the day and saw new micro beauty moments emerge. We all became beauty snackers, so indulging in bite-sized mindful beauty moments throughout the day. So applying flash treatments while we worked and swapping a full face of makeup for quick multitasking products that deliver a screen-friendly glow up in seconds. So going forward, it's clear that people are going to want to retain the flexibility and convenience of beauty snacking. And as work patterns and travel and socializing all return, we're already seeing snackable innovations uh, emerge, such as the two minute makeup bag and then portable no spill formats are also emerging. So beauty snacking is 100% here to stay. I for one have certainly been beauty snacking while working from home. Our final question for today is, what should we ask ourselves if we want to build an omni-channel offering with a strong correlation between the in real life retail experience and e-commerce? Giving us their take on this topic is Laura Saunter. Laura is a senior strategist on WGSN Insight and our retail expert who authors our annual flagship shopper forecast report amongst many others. So definitely well placed to answer this question. Let's see what Laura had to say. So as stores try to keep up with the convenience and the speed of online selling, it's going to be really important for retailers to be very agile and to really think about how they can repurpose the in-store experience in line with this huge boom in e-commerce. And this is going to mean really optimising your existing locations for new consumer demands and behaviours instead of focusing on expansion and reconsidering the retail footprint. So thinking about making your stores smaller and your back rooms bigger to allow for more space for fulfilling online orders. And this idea of kind of blending the IRL and the URL is going to mean that retailers need to upgrade their omnichannel services within the physical store. So everything from click and collect to curbside and same, same day shipping from store, as well as making sure that your staff associates have all the necessary shop floor tools, which they need to allow them to easily switch between online and offline selling. Thank you, Laura. Omnichannel is clearly the way forward for retail to ensure you don't get left behind in a very competitive global market. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like answered, please pop them in the comments box for our team. I'm Carla Bazashi and I'll see you next time.